Well, hello. How are you? I am awesome. How are you? I am good. I am good. For those uh, for those tuning in for this episode of the Alumni Experience, this is Marissa O'Neill. I'm not even saying the other <laughs> last name. Because I'm kidding. I'm kidding. My husband of 15 years would not be happy about that. No, I, and I love him too. Pulaski now. Pulaski, Pulaski. Pulaski. It's okay. I, you stop at O'Neill when you're talking about camp because that's the royalty name. You know, so that's, uh, you know. So really, he should have taken your name for camp purposes. And then fun it would have made sense. You know? Tom actually tried to talk him into that. He tried to tell Jim. So Jim and I have been married. It'll be 15 years this, or 16 years this October. And uh-huh. Jim, my dad tried to convince Jim that more men were taking their their future wives' last name as mm-hmm. opposed. And I wanted to take this is not an issue. Like I wanted yeah. to take his last name. I like that tradition, like completely up to me. <laughs> and Jim was like, Really, Tom? Name three. <laughs> my That's dad was awesome. like, uh I, I was like, Yeah, think, dad, let this yeah. one go. I think T.O. just didn't have like he was worried about Tommy. I think that's what I think that's what was happening <laughs> with the uh, with the O'Neill name. I think that's what was happening, but it's all right. You know, he'll be all right. <laughs> there are so many honorary O'Neills through the years. I feel as though the family has grown exponentially just through Golden Slipper for sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember as a kid, like I had my home parents, which happened to be the real ones, and then I had camp parents, which were yours. So uh, I totally agree. And I was I, I feel lucky enough that I felt adopted, you know, <laughs> into into the family for that period of time. So it's it's a uh, it's awesome. Awesome. So let's uh, let's let's kind of, you know, kind of get into it. What I, what we're doing is we're interviewing alumni uh, and some current staff and people that are connected to camp. So that so that the you know the kids and the staff and and other alumni get to hear these stories. Camps have been around for so many years, and none of this none of these stories are actually like documented. So this is kind of <laughs> that's probably a good thing for some of the stories. Some but of the not stories don't also. need to be documented because you know <laughs> it's awesome. But the uh, but but for some of the other stuff, you know, I know a lot of these traditions that got started when we were there you know, may have started before we got there and we may not know how they started. And then the kids now might be doing stuff that we did, you know, that we had started and then they don't know how it started and like, you know, kind of, you know, kind of bring it all together and everyone's stuck at home anyway. No, why not talk about camp a little bit? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, so, I have a good tradition for you that okay. I know how it started. Yeah. Right. Do you know, do you remember all the years ago when everybody um, like in the dining hall or someone's birthday or Olympics or anything like that and everyone used to bang their chair on the floor? Yeah. Do you remember absolutely. this where it was always like you would bang your chair, bang your chair, bang your chair? Yeah. When I was in bunk F, so this is, okay. I want to say like 1990, there was a girl, Missy Cohen, who still was one, we're mm-hmm. friends on Facebook. The right. first time, first person I met who ever made me feel like I was part of the cool club, which was like a life-changing moment, which I'm sure we'll get into of like the friends that you make. Oh, yeah. But we, everyone used to bang on the table whenever mm-hmm. you were singing happy birthday, bang, bang, bang. And we knocked over a ton of drinks. And the counselors were like, that's it. I think Aunt Jen Barata was actually one of my counselors. Ah, okay. And they were like, that's it. No more banging on the table. We we're like, well, how are we going to make noise? And Missy held onto her chair and started to jump up and down to bang that's her chair great. on the table bang our chair on the floor and then we all started to do it and i'm telling you from that day forward it was like banging on the table is not loud enough banging on the floor with your chair was mm-hmm. and it was so cool because after that i was like wait i remember the day that started because we yep. knocked over juice and missy found a way to be louder <laughs> oh my god right and that stayed for like the next decade at oh, least sure. as far as i know yeah i mean <laughs> the whole time i was there we all did that so it, oh so yeah that's, that's where it awesome. started that's awesome <laughs> I, I love stuff like that, you know, and uh, it's it's so especially the dining hall stuff. There were so many like interesting little things that happened that became like canon for like years. And then you forgot how it started, but it didn't matter. You know, it was just it was it was something oh, yeah. that brought everybody together. It's so cool. That's so cool. Well, so my first question has always been with all these interviews that I'm doing is how you were introduced to uh, to the Golden Slipper family. But you were part of the first family of Golden Slipper for like, you know, 30 years. So yeah. you were dragged along for the ride from mom and dad, right? 
We were. Well, what happened was my mom and dad and the Alpers, who were like, right. you know, the first and second family, if you were, of Golden right. Slipper back in the day. In 89, we all, um, we, those two families and a bunch of people from another organization called Variety Club wound mm -hmm. up going to Golden Slipper. And what's crazy is that, like, my parents met at camp, at the wow. Variety Club camp, as counselors okay. together. So it was like, camp was like in our blood. Yeah. So when we got to Golden Slipper, I remember feeling like so completely overwhelmed. It was humongous. I remember trying to find my way back after lunch because we always got there during orientation before the kids got there. Sure. And my mom, you know, they showed us around, of course. And then, you know, I'm nine. I'm very independent. And I'm like, I'm just going to head back to their cabin. Well, they lived in the cabin behind Vogelson. But instead right. of going down the path that went to Vogelson, I went on the path that was between Vogelson and Caden. And some very nice counselor like picked me up on my way to the main road because I was like, <laughs> I didn't know where I was going. I was just like, huh, I think this cabin's around here somewhere. And they all look alike. They were oh, all, yeah. you know, they all look, I'm like, where do we live? So luckily <laughs> somebody got me, brought me back to the main office and then right. I wound up getting back there. But yeah, we, um, since 19, 1989 is the first year the O'Neills got there. And wow. then, um, I was there through, um, all the summers except for one through 1998. So I actually, out of all of the O'Neills, I think I went there the least. But uh, I like to think, you know, those nine summers were truly um, just like the best summers ever. Yeah. I, like if you had a time machine, you can go back and like relive part of your life. I'm like summer 1997. Done. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Without a doubt, I'm going back to that summer. The yeah, best sure. time ever. That was, yeah, it's, it's insane how you can, when you try and pinpoint like that year, like whatever that year was, like for me, like I would probably like CIT year was probably my favorite of all of it. I, I think that that was that little, like you still felt kind of like a camper, but you were kind of like a staff member and you could get away with murder because Tommy was my best friend and Sue Ellen loved Tommy to death. So I got away with a little bit because I was with him. No. I got away with nothing, which is why this is so incredibly unfair. As the oldest O'Neill child, I got away with nothing. Yep. But Tommy, the youngest, <laughs> oh, not fair. Tommy, Tommy Christine Tommy and I have got a lot to say about that. Tommy had his fair share of getting in trouble at camp, though. Let's be real. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're not going to talk about golf carts and things. Like, it's, you know. He knows what I'm talking about, and now the kids are going to ask questions. <laughs> but you know, I'm leaving that in, by the way. That's definitely staying in <laughs> as they ask questions. But um, but with being the oldest, you're going to get ragged on the most. You know, you do something wrong, the other ones didn't do it yet. You know, after you've set the precedent of a couple of things being bad. Then dad's probably like, all right, you know what, Marissa did that. You know, it's normal. I didn't do a lot bad, though. Mm -mm. I, I was pretty good. I was pretty straight laced. Bad. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but that's, uh, yeah, I can't, I can only imagine. I can only imagine <laughs> the stories we can't tell on this. But the, so we were talking a little bit about, you know, the years that you went to camp and, you know, you started in bunk F. Right? That was your first summer? No, my first summer I was in bunk D, then bunk, bunk C. Bunk D. Okay. And that is when I started in that summer, it was um I remember when we first started, I like mm -hmm. vividly remember like when going to the campfire site and feeling like completely overwhelmed as they're like calling out all the names and it felt like yep. everybody knew everyone and I wasn't gonna have any friends. And I remember very specifically there are people who I'm still friends with now, Corey. Mm -hmm. Foreman, oh, yeah. who I know, mm -hmm. she was in my wedding. We are still friends. This summer, she's supposed to come and stay at my house for a week, but that all, you know, fell apart. She lives in Holland now, which is amazing. Oh, cool. um, and I remember there was a there was a girl, Bridget, and she was very tall, not as okay. tall as me, because you know I'm off the charts. But right. she was the tallest girl there, and I just decided we're going to be friends, and like went yeah. over and introduced myself, and it was her first summer too. And then Missy Cohen, who we talked about, and like Stacy sure. Klatskin, who I'm still friends with, like. Mm -hmm. All these people, like 1989, we were in this double cabin together. And um, I still remember the first time I met them. I still remember our MTV skits. I yep. still remember our, the Olympic songs. And I'm like, wow, yep. I don't remember. I know I remember un poco espanol from all my years in Spanish. But I can uh -huh. tell you what we, <laughs> what my Olympic songs were in yeah. 89 and 90. Like, that's ridiculous. But you oh, know I what? Can... Those are the things that you love and that are important. Absolutely. I forget my kids' names all the time. But I definitely remember, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> my Olympic songs from when I was captain. Like there are times I'm like, why can't I remember anything? Like I wish I would have retained some of the Spanish that I took through the years, but I'm like, no, I remember yeah. what Dora taught me with my sons. And exactly. then the rest of it I have replaced with, you know, random song lyrics and funny things from camp all the years. Speaking of with kids though, and 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 things changing. Like, I just got schooled on the fact that, like, there are dinosaurs that I learned about when I was a kid that are not even a thing anymore. Like, they totally got rid of a bunch of dinosaurs, like the brontosaurus. How can you get rid of a dinosaur? A no, stop it right it's now. Wrong. That's dumb. Uh, there, apparently, there's no pterodactyl. Like, all these things, and I'm relearning this. I have a six-year-old that is schooling me on paleontology. And I'm like, no, I have I saw Jurassic Park. I know that was a thing, you know? <laughs> Listen. Mm -hmm. If Pluto's Sam Neill told me that that was a dinosaur, it's yep. a dinosaur. I'm exactly. not messing around, people. You can call your planets whatever you want. Pluto is yep. still one. There's still yep. a brontosaurus. Although yep. I did enjoy when my son Jimmy really loved the dinosaur train. And yeah. there was the oh, one like dinosaur that, one. that I had, who had never heard of, the Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus. <laughs> Giganotosaurus. Yeah. I have right? never heard of this before. See? But it took me really a week to learn how to say it. it. It wasn't a thing when we were kids. That wasn't even like one of them. So that's a new Probably one. Because our parents couldn't say it either. So nope. we really needed it nope. phonetically I mean, on the screen. We didn't have any of the shows. There were no shows that taught us that. <laughs> you know, I mean, we had Bill Nye the Science Guy. That was like it. You know, and and he's even he's 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 uh after my time. I'm way older oh, than you, Sam. So I'm like I'm way older than um, a couple years older than me. But a couple, nice. not many, not many. Mm. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even gonna talk. We're not even gonna say it. You know, you, well, you look younger <laughs> than me now, so let's go with that. You know? Oh, done. Uh, I'll take it. I will take it. So let me. So so speaking of years attended, and you started back in Strauss. How about the awards? What kind of awards? Because you, had, I mean, you had to set it off right. I'm sure. I did, wow. and I am sure wow. some of these were due to nepotism. <laughs> However, <laughs> <laughs> I will fully admit it. I am pretty sure. Yep. That you know, some of it. I did get a handful of feathers. Right. I won the Strauss Citizenship Award. Okay. I won uh, Friends Village and I won Council Girls Village Sportsmanship. Okay. I did not win the CIT Award, which I was pretty upset with Sue Ellen about. Ooh. Or did I win the CIT Award? I don't uh, think I did. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy beat yeah. you there. Oh boy. Wrong. Ah. Wrong. Um, but I did win. I won the Counselor Spirit Award in 98 with uh, Uncle Adam Kramaroff. So mm -hmm. that's uh, speaking of honorary O'Neills. Uh, so we were actually uh, Counselor Spirit Award winners together, yep. which is like it was so crazy <laughs> and still one of like I remember sitting there and knowing um, like just sitting there. I had a little girl, Miranda, sitting with me, I remember. And they were like making this speech. And I was thinking to myself. Is, he, is Uncle Steve talking about me? And people looking at me and realizing, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I actually think this might be me. Okay. And just, you know, such an exciting time. And I don't know, it's still, I am sure that is when um, I don't keep a lot of stuff. I don't know if there's right. a lot of people who save a lot of things. Oh, I do have are. like the, pic <laughs> the pictures through the years. I really, I found um, when my husband and I, when we were moving four years ago, I found from an MTV night, this giant poster that said stay on it, which was from our 1994 MTV skit in Bunk O when we won. Okay. And I still had it. And I'm like, I need to take a picture of you and recycle you because this is now getting silly that I saved it for this long. But I did make <laughs> sure that I saved my, um, the speeches and plaques from, um, from the Golden Flipper Awards. Cause I'm like, you know what? These are pretty special. And then my older son, Jimmy, he won um, the Sportsmanship Award at Vogelson, and I felt right. really proud of that a couple of years ago because I'm like, oh my gosh, Jimmy, like, you have to save this forever because right. it's a really big deal, you know? Like yeah. you're going to treasure that even, you know, 20, 30 years from now. It's it's crazy how that, like I still have the only, the only like bigger, like big award I won at camp because, you know, of course I went the same time Tommy and Josie went, so they won everything else. But I won shoe pack, <laughs> and um, and I remember when listen, and that's the one that matters. Happening. I didn't right. win that one, and I'm like, that was Ugh. it. That's it. CIT means that nothing. Sorry, Tommy, it means nothing. <laughs> you, you know, Sue Ellen changed your diapers as a baby, so you know you had Back. a leg up no matter what. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take anything away from him on that one. Uh, I, Let's you know, do he, it. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. That's okay. He beat me in uh, in Olympics too, so we're not even going to talk about that. But 
the uh but when i won shoe pack i remember chad was giving the speech i had chad Talk about a dream team. I had Chad Deitch and Sean Banks Deutsch as my. Oh, that is a great combo. Counselor. Oh my god. Meanwhile, greatest... the whole girl side swoons every time they walk by. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> it's like having, it I remember like that effect. Boys. It's like having the Backstreet Boys as your counselors. You know, it's perfect. <laughs> and and uh, but but Chad is up there giving that speech, and and all these people just kept like hitting me, like kept hitting me, like, and I'm like. It's yep. not, it's not me. Like, you know, and, and then like, I started like, then Chad said something that made me think it might be me. And I'm like, it better not be me. Like, you know, like, I don't want to, I don't want to cry for all these people. Like, you know, but it is. No, but it's really it was, special. It was, it was you awesome. wouldn't think, mm -hmm. but unless you've been at camp, you wouldn't think like, you know, three and a half weeks you spend right. in a bunk. You know, three and a half weeks you're at camp. How life changing can those three and a half weeks be? How exactly. close can you really get to people in three and a half weeks? And if you ask anyone who's actually been to Golden Slipper, you're like, you don't even understand. Like, you will forge a lifetime of friendships in three and a half right. weeks. You will fall in love, fall out of love, fall back in love in three and a half weeks at a three, level where you're like, four, what times, just happened? <laughs> Like that yep. is just the magic of that's just the magic of camp, the magic of that place. Yep. So absolutely. yeah, like it's a really big deal. Yeah. And we when you won in '98, so I think that was actually my first summer. I think '98 was my first summer. And you were in bunk I, ten, weren't you? I was in bunk is ten. Is that when you started? Because, because my counselor was Uncle Mark, and mm -hmm. I remember when, like, I remember because you guys were tight. You were my boat buddy. At, at the lake and that's how i like i uh, that's how like we met because like i <laughs> i technically i knew you before i knew tommy because he was in nine and we didn't like he was till like a week into camp you know and uh and after that you know like that was it but that's so funny like to think back when i think about my first summer one of the things that i think about on like you know like that is more vivid is the fact that I couldn't, I wasn't a dolphin or a shark, so I couldn't go on a boat and you would go with me. And then you winning Furman. So like, those were like the, the, the things that, cause you were like the person I laughed. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I never knew that. Yeah. I remember taking you out on the boat and I remember um, making, I don't know, if, I don't know if this is how it went down, but I remember mm -hmm. the way that I felt was you didn't want to ask anyone to go on the boat with you. And I made it seem like you were doing me a favor cause I wanted yeah. to go out on the boat. Like, yep. I really want to go out in a rowboat. Sam, would you mm -hmm. come with me? Because I, I don't want to go out by myself. Anybody, <laughs> I, so I grew up on a boat. Like before I came to camp, my dad had a boat and we would spend the weekends down in the Chesapeake. And I was so embarrassed that I didn't get to, I wasn't a dolphin because like I knew how to swim. I just suck at taking tests, but like I freak out when people are watching me. And then when I, I was like a barracuda or whatever, and I was so embarrassed about that. I was like, I don't wanna go on the lake. I don't wanna go in the middle. I'm gonna stay over here. Like, you know, like I was trying to play it off like it was like whatever. I didn't want anybody to know I couldn't swim. I thought that was like, you know, like, well, I could swim, but I, could, I couldn't do, I didn't pass the, the test. And I, I was so embarrassed about that. I remember that when you were like, you wanna come with me? I was like, yeah, cause I really wanna go on a boat too. I'm just not allowed. <laughs> Like, don't make me go up by myself. I'm not allowed to as a counselor. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. So you saved me, and you didn't even know it for that part. Uh, of it. But we had we had a blast. I, I I that summer was was crazy. Like that first year, I mean, I think about all the counselors that were there. It was like it was amazing. Like that was, I was so mad. I wanted to leave all the time, and then like the last week happened, and it was perfect. And then I was like, I'm definitely coming back. Like I'm stuck. And Todd, well, I, I feel like Tommy that's. Was, Sometimes Obviously, you just feel like, like, shut up, you're like, yeah. You know? well, I think sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to get used to it because it's so different from yeah. like what you're used to if you've never been there. And right. it's also like, it's so, it's like getting shot out of a cannon on day one. So right. I remember feeling, even though, um, like, I just remember feeling like I was out of the loop. Like when I first started, like it was my first yeah. summer, I'm nine, bunk D, and I'm like, Everybody knows everybody. And by like three days in, like you're in the thick of it too, but you have yeah. to really give it those couple of days to be like, wait a yeah. second. 
they're completely just enveloping me into this. Okay, mm -hmm. I can make it through this because it is, it's a lot. Like there is no easing into golden slipper. It's like you get yeah. on the bus and it is rah, right for it's, the whole ride. It's you, yeah, it's either in you or it's not. And it's like, it's very apparent who's going to come back for a second summer and who's not <laughs> coming back for that second, <laughs> summer, you know? And, and I love we, watching that with counselors, like the first year counselors. Mm -hmm. Like when Spoon showed up, I was like, this is, yeah, he's in his element. <laughs> you know, yeah, he, for sure. Like he's more old school than I am. And he's been here for eight minutes, you know? And, well, and it's then, funny. He and yeah. I never crossed paths at Golden Slipper, which right. I didn't realize because I feel mm -hmm. like I've known him forever. And I'm like, what do you mean we were never at camp together? Nope. It's like, huh. That's they started bizarre. in 01. Yeah. So you missed them oh, by my like gosh. three years. Yeah. But it's. But that's what, but the, that kind of a person just makes sense. You know, they yeah. show up, they're very camp. It is what it is. They're there forever, you know, it, and, but then there are other people that show up and they're like, yeah, no, I'm not going to fit in here, but I'm going to finish my time this year. And then this experience was great. Let's move on, you know, <laughs> and, and, and it's both of the ways are okay. It's just a matter awesome. of like when you yeah. fit in, you're like, this is everything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're, when you, you could be camp popular and you could be the least popular person at home and you could be the most popular person at camp. Like, you literally a, have child, just described, you know? you've described my life. So when I yeah. was, and I know for those of you who I've never had the opportunity to meet, I'm six foot two. I hit six foot at 12. So I'm talking like bunk G. I'm six feet tall, <laughs> uh, taller than Tom, taller than Maureen, still yep. taller than Tommy, kills him. So I like came out of nowhere. <laughs> so, um, but I remember like, I was always so self-conscious at school. Like I was always, you know, didn't feel like I had any friends, didn't really feel, you know, very popular, wasn't comfortable, like in my own skin, felt so awkward and I am still awkward. Then we got to <laughs> camp all of a sudden, like I was talking in the beginning, like Missy Cohen, changed right. my life because she was the cool girl and was like hey we're going to be What's friends that? i'm like what the cool girl is friends with me because this doesn't happen to marissa and then next mm -hmm. thing you know i became cool and this is like still <laughs> the isolated incident of my life that reflects right. coolness what happens at golden slipper where i'm like yeah. i was awesome for yeah. a small window of time in a very specific location yeah. within a very small zip code, but I was yeah. cool yeah. once. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Dude. I totally get like, tell the boys the story. I was like, oh my gosh, this one time um, I ran for like director for the day and I had a whole theme that was around Evita that I was going to be, you know, ushered down and everyone's going to cheer Marissa instead of right. Evita. Like I had a whole right. plan and the boys are like, this is so embarrassing, mom. And meanwhile, I'm like, this is one of the greatest moments of my life. <laughs> right. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, listen, I'll take it. I'll take that memory. I just wish we mm -hmm. had more pictures because there's no picture. There's the no cameras cons, like that back then. Yeah. There were no cameras. There was no, like you had dude, a handful of disposable cameras and who knew what they were going to develop when it was all said and done. So you're oh like, oh, well, we got the stories. That's about yeah. it. That's it. I, re I remember coming to camp with like three or four of those like cameras in a box and then yes. you bring them home and then you forgot about them. Like, because it didn't matter. You're telling everybody the stories of what happened. Nobody cared about the pictures. And then, like, all of a sudden you find it and you're like, oh, God, what year is this from? Oh, man, what what's year, What happened? <laughs> like, you like, know. This is a pool party. Like, what is right? that? Remember, there were certain things at camp that you always, like, really looked forward to. The My sons and I were talking because Jimmy and Danny both went to camp. Right. And um, But they were talking about their favorite thing was grilled cheese day in the in the dining hall. Yep. They were like, those grilled cheeses were so good. And They're Danny has a special awesome. request. He would like more sloppy joes in the future. But okay. I remember. We'll pass that I along. The, pass that along. More sloppy joes. But I remember pizza bagels. I don't know any of the, the, yes. the old school folks. Pizza bagel day. And I remember sitting in the dining hall. And when the pizza bagel tray came through. And I was fortunate enough. I had Jen Barata as a counselor three separate summers. Three <laughs> nice. separate bunks. Yep. Amazing. And right. I remember when the pizza bagels came down, she would get them. And it was almost like a single motion where she would flip all the pizza bagels off of the tray and give it back to the like waiter that. so we could get it refilled before. <laughs> She's like, whoa, go, yep. go, go, go. Slid down we the table. So, 
Yep. We were professional pizza bagelers where it was like, get as many pizza bagels as you can because you know that they're not going to have them all because they were that favorite. But I'll never yep. forget. I can tell you where we were. In the, I think it was like bunk I, the way that you got all those yep. pizza bagels off and sent it around. And it's just like the stuff that you still laugh about, mm -hmm. you know, 30 years later, I'm like, yeah. still a pizza bagel is still delicious. I remember how they tasted. I remembered yep. the sheer joy of watching them wheel out on the carts. like. Up. It was like, this is the most amazing gift right now, a pizza bagel. You know, you're yeah, like, really? Absolutely. This is the whole thing. But I mean, talk about comfort foods. You know, I'm going to oh make myself God. a pizza bagel on a bad day. Yep. I remember one summer, I don't know how it like it never was done before or whatever, but cheese in a can became a big problem. <laughs> and because like easy or, cheese, like, yeah, like easy cheese, the spray Ew. cheese, right? So that so. Obviously, kosher camp, right? Not mixing the meat and the, oh, and the cheese. Oh, all right, yeah. And and we started writing home, send care package with easy cheese or spray cheese or whatever. And like, so we, and back then it was really cool. Cargo pants, cargo pockets, like the whole bit on the side, you know, or my Jenkos or whatever had the giant pockets in them. Yes, I said Jenkos, dating myself. But we would keep the easy cheese in like the big cargo pocket and then like your the, contraband the, cheese contraband mm -hmm. cheese and when when and uh the, the cookout lunches and stuff it was like yeah who got the cheese I mean, you know real quick <laughs> cheeseburgers you know and and it got so bad i think it was mike staff started the kosher police <laughs> and started that's actually through. that's an old one too yeah i think he brought it back because of that and he would, back. Just, yes. he would just yell spray cheese and just start taking off <laughs> And like he would grab a kid in the chair, pull him out in the middle of everybody, and you know it was love it. He had a helmet with like a light, like a helmet, like a visor, and it, oh my god, it was it was it was perfect. It was so perfect. I remember and, yeah. kosher police back in the day. The waiters counselors were George Sloan and Matt Cohen, and it was a okay. silent lunch. And silent lunch, everything was just funny at silent lunch because I you love could silent not. Lunch. Silent <laughs> lunch was like just just an exercise in in futility in so many ways right. you're like you can't keep these kids quiet and no. i remember being a really intense counselor being like joe we're gonna lose points right ridiculous no. um i would love to go back now and be like don't care have fun right. Um, right. but i remember cheer. that was cheer until that the was, walls fall down <laughs> just who cares yeah. just give it up yep. but um i remember <laughs> matt and george going around as the kosher police as part of a silent lunch and it just wow, like nice killing everybody where it was like the funniest thing you could imagine was kosher police attacking during silent lunch and it was oh, like comic gold and at the that time like gold. i mean there are certain things where, like you still laugh about it and you're like yeah. oh my gosh that was funny <laughs> there are so many stories that pop into my head like while i'm doing mundane things and sometimes i will cackle like a like an idiot like i will laugh so hard and and nothing happened but it's just like a story popped into my head of something that happened at camp. And then people are like, are you okay? Like this thing happened in like 2002. You don't understand. It's fine. Just move on. Well, I, like, you know. Anyone who was at Golden Slipper the summer of 1994, uh -huh. so I, think, I can't remember. I think it was first encampment. Will laugh okay. every single time they hear the song, I swear by all for one. It is a given. You will laugh because it was one of those, um, talent show moments okay where there was a very very sweet boy who really he had a group of his friends and they were going to sing i swear and Ooh, it was fire. so bad and as he was going like he stayed with it and the other boys started to back away yep. and even tom and steve who had the perfect poker faces they would never laugh at kids at one point they were like down oh. heads going like they lost it everybody just that's and to awesome. this day when that song comes on i'm like <laughs> at the end of despicable me too yeah you watch past the credits all the minions, the minions. Sing, i yep. swear mm -hmm. maureen my mom lost it when that yeah. came on and a lot at all times <laughs> talent show 1994. Oh anyone who was there you know uh -huh. I think the boy who sang it had a crush on a girl in my bunk, Mia. And I uh -huh. like remember she was like, this is so bad. And we were laughing even harder because I think it was like a love song to her. Yeah. Uh, stuff that you remember all oh, these yeah. years later. 
And then Still they probably got married when it carnival. comes on. <laughs> oh God. How many people did we marry at that carnival? Thousands. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. I yep. loved that carnival and all uh, those Western great. unions. Yep. I did save a lot of Western unions through the yeah. year. A lot I, of Western unions. I lost a lot of them in transit. Like I, I cause I, when I went to East Stroudsburg university, I used to leave stuff at camp. And then when I went to move in, I didn't have to schlep it home and schlep it back up. I just go yeah, pick it up sense. to camp, right? Well, I forget what happened the one summer and whoever cleaned the bunk out threw out all my stuff. And like, I had a box of like old memory things that I would bring like, to camp no! with me. Right? Yeah. They, they threw out one of my, I, they threw out a trumpet. That was awesome. Like, yeah, it's like, like, oh yeah, this is trash. <laughs> like what? A trumpet? Like, not it's so a random. Instrument, but it's fine. No, I just throw it away. Yeah, that's so, cool. Yeah. So all like all that was gone, and I was like, oh, so like, come on, did you tell my dad? Because Tom's answer would have been, you shouldn't have left it. Should have left it there, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna watch this, and uh, I'm gonna get punched. He's still gonna be like, <laughs> I should shouldn't have left it there. Should have left it, you know. I thought so I like, had the okay. I remember asking someone if I was allowed to do that, and they said yes, but I I don't think. Well, it, fun fact, Sam, mm -hmm. if he does watch this, please know yeah. that he watches everything that I do on mute. So don't worry. Like all the shows when I do I them on say, QVC or whatever it is, Tom literally watches me on mute. And I didn't know he did this until years <laughs> into my job right now. Right. And my dad was like, yeah, I saw your show. And I was like, oh, did you hear me give you a shout out? And he's like, oh, no, I, I watch you on mute. What? <laughs> yeah. So he watches with no sound on. So don't even worry about it. He's not going to hear uh, this. That's so great. Well, so, so now that I knew that, I can <laughs> do say whatever exactly. you want. Exactly what I think. Whatever you want, go person. right ahead. <laughs> yeah. Good uh, call. Yeah, I'm not. Hey, I'm not stupid, and I love him to death, so I would never, you know. <laughs> but um, you it's talked about guy. silent lunch. You talked about silent lunch, and so let's hear the Olympic stories. Like, are, were you a captain? What was you know oh what was your favorite team? You know who who did your whatever. I remember through the years, I was fortunate. I just had some really great, like when I was a camper, I had mm -hmm. a lot of really just fun years as um, just like on different teams. And I was never on the same team as a friend. Like I was never, Corey and I were best friends. We were never on teams together except for once. And I'll tell you that in a second. But I loved, um, it was really cool when I was on, oh my gosh. I think I was when I was in Friends or like late Friends, early Council Girls. I wrote an alma mater, and, nice. and I forget the I forget the Olympic team that it was on, but I really asked if we could do it. And Mike Noble, who was like writing all the songs that did and everything, was like, "Absolutely, we can do your alma mater." And I was like, "Oh my gosh, really? That's like, awesome! You're gonna let a camper do the alma mater? Like that's awesome!" So I remember I did to um American Pie, and uh, it was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I had classic. it written before I got to camp, and I couldn't believe that. And then when I was a CIT, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to be one of those counselors who makes the posters. <laughs> like, yep. I'm not going to actually, I'm just going to paint the posters. I have zero artistic ability. And there are so many pieces of like art in that, in the dining hall that I know. My Legit sister Christina art. did a lot of them. Yeah. I mean, Elise Diamond would do like these amazing pieces of yeah. art. And I'm like, yeah, I'm totally yeah. going to do this. I can barely draw like a turkey with my hand. Right. But Scott Blacker Same. was the it was the sorcerers, and Scott Blacker says to me as a CIT, he's like, so listen, uh, we 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 got you to write the songs. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, and we I remember I wrote songs with Stacy Klatskin. My favorite one was Total Eclipse of the Heart. Yeah, because that's made to be an alma mater or yep. no sorcerers. I still remember that. It's like who writes a song to Total Eclipse of the Heart? This one, um, and then I was an Olympic <laughs> captain for Dracula. Nice. Which was awesome. And this is another thing that was started. So um, we were on Dracula. One of the coolest things was that um, Corey and I were actually the only time ever we were on the same team together. And she wrote okay. the Olympic songs. And I was so mad because when she was a captain, like the, like later that summer, I wasn't yeah. on her team. And I'm like, no, because <laughs> it's before they recruited. Right. You know what I mean? Before you got to pick your uh, people, you, just you were just assigned. Yeah. yeah, you just you just found out who your team was. So we were on Dracula, but one of the ideas, I had my senior prom this year, like it was 97, so I had just had my senior prom, graduated from high school, 
and it was like a black floor length dress and, and had like high gloves. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to dress as, as like Dracula's bride for, for the, for the, for the song and sign. So my mom's friend was actually coming up to visit. And I remember she brought up my dress and she had a Dracula cape. So Mark Moulton and I, we were camp, we were co-camp, we were um, captains together. So that yeah, was like, that was like, we were, that's actually we, how back in the day, Camp Love, that's where it started. Oh. We, were, um, we, were, we were captains so, together. So pause, so when, pause. So yes. when we were talking about the lake earlier, part of that story was that Mark was my counselor in bunk 10. So when we would go out on the lake, the conversation was like, oh, yeah, how would you like give an activity? What's Mark doing? Like, you know, and all. So Listen, that I was, was 17, and now all of this old. makes sense. Know. Now all of this makes sense. I got it now. <laughs> so he was That's such awesome. a good sport because I was like, we are going to dress all the kids up. And I remember going to yeah. Stroud Mall with Corey and mm -hmm. buying all of these trash bags that you're gonna tie around the kids' necks like capes. And I remember bumping Perfect. into my mom and dad at the Stroud Mall and my mom looking at me and I'm like, oh, we're just getting stuff for Olympics. And she's like, mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. She's like, Marissa, do you know what day it is? And I was like, it's the first day of Olympics. She's like, mm-hmm, and it's your father's birthday. And I was like, oh, sorry about that, dad. <laughs> oh. First day of Olympics. I'm like, yeah. I still feel bad about that completely was so focused. Yeah. But we bought all these like little capes so they were all wearing them there. And I remember Dana Koppel, like people who just stick out like Dana Koppel, like sitting, yeah. like doing the songs, wearing this, uh, wearing the cape that I'm like, you have to wear it. And yeah. um, but we did an entrance where we waited until everybody was in the pavilion before we were going to enter. And I had on a floor length gown and he was dressed as Dracula and we walked in, they had built us like makeshift thrones if you will and we sat there like royalty for the entire like in character oh my for the God, entirety of the night now we only came in third but we won spirit like a uh, spirit and sportsmanship so that's really what matters says the team in that third comes too. In third. it's fine but it's, it's like one of those things but, but can i tell you after that summer <laughs> all of a sudden the entrance was becoming part of olympics and it was because yeah. like we we made the entrance mostly because i just wanted to wear that dress again and I was yeah, like, I am going to be so pretty rolling in. But we had, I remember walking down and everyone like, like watching as we walked down from the pool, yeah. like, mm -hmm, am I in a gown? You better yep. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and then that became, and then it's like one of those things that became, became a thing like this entrance. Yeah. But yeah. it was, it was pretty cool. And it was when we kicked up the idea and I was like, you guys, what if we do this? So yeah. um, that was a lot Love of it. fun. And I was so happy that like Corey wrote the songs. Yep. And it was just like, just one of those really fond memories. And then I remember um, the other thing that I really loved was we did a song, uh, what was it, when, for McDonald's to Wild Thing by Tone Loke. Uh -huh. It was so hard. It involved a lot of clapping. And uh -huh. it was like, there was a whole clap sequence and everything that we had to keep the other two songs super easy <laughs> so that everybody could learn <laughs> this yeah. one song. But can I tell you, it was awesome. I'm like, uh -huh. still like one of my greatest life accomplishments, other than of course, having children and all of those love was right. That's, <laughs> that's post camp life. That's a whole different thing. But it was that's like one of the things like that yeah. McDonald's song was fantastic like that's yep. something that you hold on to and Absolutely. i think too i remember rachel nestor and i working so hard to memorize every song every word to wild things so that one yeah. time it was like a talent show and they had a, you had a stall and rachel yeah. and i were like you know what we'll get up and everyone already knew the clap from the olympics like from right. the Olympic song that we got up and the two of us sang Wild Thing by Tone Loke as a stall activity with the whole camp knowing the camp, the clap sequence. <laughs> I'm so angry <laughs> that I wasn't there for that because that sounds that was... like it was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun. It was, yeah. I was Rachel Nestor and I, we were, um, we were in, a, we were co-counselors for a while. And then what's funny too is like the different, you know, when like you get your bunks together and you find out who you're going to be with. When I was a CIT, I was a CIT with Carrie Rosenbaum and mm -hmm. Stacey Barada. The two yeah. of them are like five one, five two, and I was like this gigantic CIT, like twice their size for like everything. <laughs> and we have we had I should find those somewhere. The funniest pictures of like the three of us walking around, where I literally yeah. look like I could eat the two of them. <laughs> <laughs>
I would just love to see the close-up shots of the two of them and then just this body with no... Uh, just the body. That, like yeah. <laughs> that was the whole thing. We're like, here is this gigantic 15-year-old CIT. with. Them. But we had so much yeah. fun. Like, all the yeah. stuff that you just remember. And I think that was the summer. I think I had... Um, You're talking right before this started with Elise Diamond and Steph yeah. Shane. Like, they were in my bunk. And it was just, like... It was just the coolest thing. Like, having, oh, yeah. you know... These just like amazing people through the years that you're seeing them become these amazing adults and these awesome parents and having these super cute kids. And it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm so happy that I got to be a part of your life in a very small way all those years ago, but I'm still sure. able to follow up with everything you do. Well, part of, it's actually funny. It's part of the reason that I, I like that uh, the alumni group started talking about doing something like this is yeah. we kept, we kept saying, you know, all the things that like camp did for us to turn us into actual productive members of society and yeah you know, and and that goes by the wayside when people don't know that these people grew up to be amazing people you know and and part of wanting to interview everybody is so parents and the kids that are at camp can see like that you learn things and you build your character by being yeah. at camp and you can become something that you never thought you could be just because you have the confidence of camp like behind well, I think, you, you know i think it's so funny because right before this started true story yeah. sat down to record with with sam and i looked at her i was like are we recording this on video he's like oh yeah i'm like i'm gonna need 10 minutes because <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> like we were outside playing badminton my hair's in like a ponytail i'm like oh no hang on so this is what yeah. i look like when i dressed up for everybody you're welcome um yeah. but it's funny because when I was growing up and I mean, even as, you know, a teenager and everything at camp, like I, I, I don't know where, at what point, but I know it was at Golden Slipper. All of a sudden I became confident enough to get in front of people. Right. Like I always kind of felt like I was always trying to like shrink back and be smaller. And then all of a sudden at camp, I was like, no, you know what? Like I can get up and I can get on a microphone and I can do fun things. And, right. you know, I don't, I can trust that I'm what I'm going to put out is going to be received with love and you know people are going to take care of me in a way that as an adult you don't get right. so I think a big part of my job now and um this for anyone who's who's not familiar and why would you be um I don't know if you watch QVC <laughs> but I am um I am one of the people who presents it cosmetics on QVC so I am now on television which is hilarious to anyone who knew me growing up <laughs> because I didn't wear makeup <laughs> I didn't do my hair like I just kind of rolled around and you know got to where I was going looking how I look um but can I tell you it was like being at camp and being able to put yourself out there like I would never imagine like there are so many times like you don't think you'd ever get on a stage in front of 300 people and then all of a sudden it's your first summer at camp and you have to and right. not that you have to you want to you're like you oh my to. gosh like i'm gonna get up here and i'm gonna show everybody that i learned all my olympic songs or right. i have my mtv skit and everyone's gonna clap and cheer for me and no one's right. gonna make fun because i'm not making fun of anybody else either and that's right. different from school it's certainly right. different from adulthood like it just it's the only place where you can really um kind of put yourself out there and yes we did laugh really hard at i swear and i still yeah. feel a little bit bad about that <laughs> but it was hilarious and right. i <laughs> well it's and, the only thing i really laughed hard at all and years. you're gonna and you know what at camp you're gonna do stuff that is really embarrassing and oh my you, gosh and if you lean into it it's even better you know i like, I can't even imagine the number of times that I embarrass myself. I remember falling flat oh. on my face in front of all of Friends Village. Yep. Um, try we had to do like this fancy dance or something for um for the welcome show that involved mm -hmm. somehow it was some move that I had to go like this. I don't even know, but I still remember it kind of. And oh, I was yeah. just as awkward then as I am now. And I took a step on that amphitheater floor and boom. Yep. Flat down. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. up. I'm okay. <laughs> just yep. kept going. And the girls, everyone's trying not to laugh. I'm like, you guys can laugh. Yep. I just fell flat on my face yeah. trying to dance. Yeah. It's fine. It's but fine. it's, you know, you put yourself out there, you do your yeah. thing. And, you know, everybody just kind of laughs and goes on from it. It's a, that's, that's the gift of Golden Slipper. Well, and, and after you've done that a couple of summers, going on a job interview isn't that hard. You know? Yeah, right. Because I mean, if you once you, I mean, like once something has happened where it, that happened in front of three hundred queens, you know, <laughs> is there that, anything worse? Which is worst that's the worst. Out there. Absolutely. I mean, 
I, I mean, all of my first musical performances of my life were at camp. You know, I, I was, I was, I had a great time talking to uh, Kelly Costello not that long ago when we were yes! doing. Yes. And so that'll be one, you know, one of the interviews that you know when they get posted, you'll see that. And we talked for a while, and I was saying about how, you know, like uh, she was such a big influence on me because she did so much of the music stuff, and then mm -hmm. I, tr and and I. I was really bad in the beginning where like I was I was very snobbish with music and I was like these kids don't want to hear Cat Stevens they want to hear Green Day get out of the way lady like you know and it's my turn and and I I look back and and it's like but but I never would have gotten up to do it if it wasn't for her playing Cat Stevens or Tom Wolpert playing um you know Wanted Dead or Alive or so Oh well, yeah the Magic Dragon and you know all Still of that know all and, those songs yeah. Did you know back in the day? Now I'm talking mm -hmm. back like 89, 90. There, if you had um like an elective or one of your activities was actual was music, right. and there was a counselor. I'm pretty sure her name was Melissa Bloom. I just remember she had the most beautiful curly hair, and I thought yeah. she was the coolest person on the planet. Like you know, and like you remember being nine, seeing a person where you're like, she is spectacular, and mm -hmm. she would teach us as part of our. Um, as part of music, the words to Cat Stevens. That's right. how I learned every word to Fire and Rain and You've yep. Got a Friend was part of like this like activity. So it's like yep. all these years that go by and you're like, wow, I really wish I like, I just so like treasured that. And every time those songs come on, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been over 30 yeah. years mm -hmm. since I learned those songs from, you know, a counselor playing a guitar, but I still remember right. her name. I still remember yeah. her curls and I still remember those words. Well, talking to Kelly, and he was like, you know, I still only play these same songs on guitar, however many oh, yeah. years later. And, like, that's all I really know. But for, for people that don't know, because I never talked about this on any of the other interview things, but, like, I'm in a band currently, have been in, in band since I was 14, but I never would have done that if it wasn't for playing music at camp. Matt yeah. Dimmler, Matt Dimmler was my CIT in, in I think, 98 or something and made me do a Beastie Boys song with him for the talent show. And then, and and that was like my first onstage experience, like big audience onstage experience. And then I never stopped playing music at camp. My band has played at camp since then, but like That's I so play cool. at Xfinity Live, I play at World Cafe Live and like all these, other, awesome. like these bigger places now, never would have happened if I didn't do that at camp. And it's like the best part-time job ever. I mean, what's 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 better than singing umbop to a bunch of crazy people at a bar? <laughs> can't beat it. You can't nothing. beat it. Nothing. Exactly. Actually, nothing. <laughs> That's yep. perfect. But you're fun. so right. And I think yep. you know everybody kind of they find their niche where it's like you know yep. little things that are just that are fun to do. And um, I remember all the kids. I, I remember back in the day, Gaga. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was like this epic epic experience back in the day and i remember like just trying so hard i had a co-counselor joe irvin i actually have his picture right here i keep it at my desk like the, uh, my friend joe the two of us mm -hmm. oh he was such a good guy um that we decided that we were going to be uh we were going to have a bigger elective at gaga than swim and we really were actively be. oh actively we were going to be, be the number one elective. Why uh, we cooked up the plan. That's why in this picture, that's uh -huh. why we're both holding up a number one because we were number one. We beat swim. Now not, that seems like a, like a great idea. Don't even believe it. seemed like a great idea until Tom, my dad, Uncle Tom O'Neill, wouldn't give us any more counselors. <laughs> so many kids. And I was like, this is a terrible idea. So it was two of you and what, 50 kids? Oh my gosh, there were so many kids. <laughs> and I was like, and then I made game, and I was terrible at Gaga. Like I have no yep. hand-eye coordination and my arms are too long to, just no. Yep. And I don't like the dirt, no. However, um, I we I gave myself the title of Gaga Goddess. Gaga and whatever I you. Whatever I said went. And yep. it was, we really did run that, like that, like crazy, like just, yep. we loved it. And then we got in big trouble because there was a little boy, Reggie, who was in bunk two, mm -hmm. and he created a, a sport called socketry, where he would take socks, fill them up with sand, and wing them up the tree in Vogelsand. So there was a point in time, my mom said, it, as of a couple of years ago, there's still a handful of socks up there. But this whole tree 
was just filled with socks. God. So, you know, uh, my mom comes over, she's head counselor, and she's like, listen, right. she and Uncle Tom back there, she's like, you got to get these socks out of the tree. One, right. they're going to kill the tree. Two, why are kids throwing socks in the tree? And three, parents are going to be really mad when all the socks come down, like when their kids don't come home without socks. And I'm like, oh, right. okay. You know, I'm 17, 18 years old, whatever. Fine, so mom. we get like, we get like a playground ball and Reggie's job right. is throwing the playground ball up in the tree to get the socks to come down. So finally I look at him, I'm like, Reggie. Where did you get all these socks? He's like, oh, don't worry. They're not camper socks. And he comes down. He picks up a sock and he reads the name. He's like, Uncle Reed, I found one of your socks. They were taking the counselor's socks <laughs> up in the tree. Adam Kramroff's socks were up there. Reed Lion socks were up there. Oh, my and God. And I was like, actually, this is the funniest thing I've ever heard. And Adam Kramroff was like, why are all of my socks in this tree? And I'm like, how did you guys not know that the kids were throwing your socks in the tree? But I was like, tree. I was like, that is though. He's like, wow. I'm better to sport. It's called socketry, throwing socks in the tree. <laughs> but that's what happens when you have 50 kids at Gaga and two counselors. Yep. But we yep, were so. number one. We really pushed hard to be number one that <laughs> summer. Where I was like, well, we are going to win. It's, oh. it's there's so many instances where you succeed and fail at camp all at the oh, same time. <laughs> <laughs> we were so, I still laugh. I was like, that was such a great bad idea. Oh, but it was man. a lot of fun. And like, everyone was so like proud to be part yeah. of it. And I remember there are two waiters, Malik yep. and Will, who were like, they were going to be in this with us, right. like play in, like to do Gaga, except they had never right. played Gaga before. And there was a little boy, Nate, who was in bunk too. He's like, I'll show you how to play. And they're like, follow along this like seven year old yep. who's like, show them how to block and dive and all this stuff. And I'm like, this is such a unique thing to see right <laughs> here. It's like, yeah. how do you learn how to play Gaga? You're 14, right, and five old. times his size from a seven year old who is hardcore with like band aids on his knuckles just to prepare yep. himself for Gaga knuckle. Yep. And I'm like, oh my yep. God. Yep. And I, being a counselor in Vogelson, like I was never a big Gaga person because I started in Caden. So like Gaga uh, never like never got That was not your way life. of life. No, it was not my way of life. And I mean I respect the game. Don't get me wrong. It's hardcore. I get it. You better. You know? If you say yeah. don't say that a golden slipper, you're done. 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 <laughs> One of my favorite things would be to see foreign staff see Gaga for the first time that had never seen it. And then <laughs> Literally needing a seven or eight year old child to explain to them the game, the rules, and the I rules. Saw kid, I saw a kid talk to a counselor. I forget. I forget who, which which counselor it was, and it's, it's killing me that I can't remember because the face was perfect. This kid said, "Listen, and when that ball goes, you got to sacrifice your body." <laughs> <laughs> and that he's serious. And he, he wasn't playing was. around. Serious. He was, sacrifice your body. Sacrifice I remember he's your body. Up to him like this, you know, because he's like eight and this is a grown person, you know. But did, did, did Tommy? Did, did Tommy sacrifice ever tell your you body. about? Did Tommy ever tell you about getting woken up in the Gaga pit? Did you ever hear that story? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Is so, it suitable for all audiences? The way I'll tell it, it will be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we had an off day. Or I'm sorry, yeah, an off day. So we so we were out for our off day. We're we're gone. We come back. Of course, it's after everyone's in bed because we had until noon, you know, the next day for our off day. And I think we were JCs or something like that. We were in in Vogelson and uh, um, either yeah, I think we had to be JCs because you don't get off days when you're CIT. So we're in Vogelson, and we decided it was going to be a good idea to camp out in the Gaga pit. Right. So we so we crashed in the Gaga pit and we're sleeping in there and it's whatever. It's like sleeping outside. Who cares? We're at camp. Adam, in the Vogelson Gaga pit? In, in Vogelson Gaga pit. <clears throat> Kramaroff was the vil village leader and he silently woke up every bunk for lineup. Silently. No whistle, no nothing. How loaded, this happened? Loaded all the kids into the Gaga pit while we were asleep. <laughs> and then threw the ball up and that's how we woke up <laughs> oh i love me some crammer off that's Yo, amazing <laughs> that was incredible <laughs> incredible oh that that's, is a good i mean one. i was like what it, you know, screaming and you know getting hit in the face and and i'm you know i'm on the ground like and 
and then they were sacrificing I, your body. Right. But when I realized <laughs> what was happening, I was like, dude, that was excellent. Well like, done. There's... And that was the one and only time Vogelson Village ever got up quietly. That was it. That was it. <laughs> they don't know. A single opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I got a, I got a question for you. So what summer impacted you the most? Like overall, like personality, future life things that happen, like whatever. Where did, what was mm. that summer? Your What was your turning point summer? It was probably my summer, my first summer in, um, oof, I was probably, all right, I'm going to say it was my, the waitress summer when I was in bunk O and bunk P. Yeah. Um, it was just, just like as a, you know, I think, just in general, like it was that sweet spot of knowing that you were like on the brink of no longer being a camper and yep. you think you're so old, but you still like just, 15. <laughs> you're still not even, I was 14. Like 14, I was like, right? this is, I was 14 and just, you know, really, um, I don't know. That's just like one of those things where it was, the whole summer was just kind of bittersweet. Yeah. But in the very best of ways, where it was yeah. like just remembering and hanging on to every single piece of that summer as much as I possibly could. Yeah. Um, you know, there are definitely ones that had like better stories and, you know, yeah. better, um, I don't know, more adventures and uh, falling yeah. in love and out of love and all that stuff. Yeah. But that summer, 1994, I guess, was the one where it was just like, you know what, this is just this one slice of being a kid for one last minute and i just yeah. i just loved it like that part yeah. of it and i remember we did like we won mtv night and you know we were just like bunk oh was so fun and then being a waitress in bunk in the bunk p and finally feeling like oh this is what's being a waitress and realizing this is terrible i don't want to get up this early every single day and bring people food like pass on this forever god that was my the favorite waitresses. really no it. oh my god no no yeah, mm -hmm. I would do mm -hmm. that again. Like if 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 you were doing mm -hmm. the time machine thing to like to that to would be, be your a, summer. A camper, like to be a camper, it would be that summer. To be a counselor would be my CIT. So those back to back summers, waiter and then CIT was like that was it for me. But being but a waiter, too, ah, uh, was awesome. awesome. And I also think too, like those summers were the ones where it was like it was the bunks weren't perfect. Like we had yeah. you know different people come in, and you really had to we had to find ways to kind of solve our problems together in ways yeah. where it's like, I just remember like one of the girls always feeling left out and in the beginning being like, she's crazy. I don't know why she feels left out. And then finally realizing, wait a second, Marissa, you might actually be making this part of a problem. So yeah. you need to try to figure it out. And then us figuring it out together as, you know, 13, 14 year old girls, we have to yeah. figure out how we're going to live together. And then having this amazing summer, yeah. But it was like, we almost had to like go through it. I don't know. Like it was just one of those things where like, it wasn't perfect, right? but that was okay. And it was just those, those types of memories where it was just, you could feel us all becoming young women, yeah. you know? I, I don't know. Yeah. But um, if I, I wouldn't relive that summer, but it is the one that definitely, um, I was just days of where, where I learned the most about like what it means to actually be a, I don't know, responsible human being while you're at camp, like in a way to kind right. of think outside of yourself. Yeah. And that's so, hard yeah. to do for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, they, they, you, know you, you never had that. When, when you live with people, it's very different than yeah. like the day camp people. They don't get it. Like they don't. It's not the same thing. You can't run away from your problems. You can't go home from your problems every day. Your problem could be in the bed next to you, you know, and you have to learn how you to gotta figure that. it out. Right. And that's such a that's such a a, um, a life skill that I just don't see in a lot of people. I just see it in camp people. Most camp people can have, you can disagree about everything and have a civil conversation and work, you know, work out, find your common ground and move on. And I see people that never went to camp who act like children. Yeah. And, you know, and, and because they never had to deal with anything that wasn't. You have to you know, figure it out. Yeah. So it's, it's, in, I mean, it's such a great, that's a great, like uh, it's a it's a great story because yeah. you know it, it i think it shows a lot of kids like look you're not going to agree with everybody all the time and you're going to have problems but yeah. if you work together you get out of it and i think that's a lot of what camp does for people 
It you does because like you, you had to find a way. And I think that's, you know, that that's what I remember. And I can't even remember like the specifics of it. I just remember it started like the summer starting being like, this is not going to be as awesome as we thought. And by the end of it, it was my best summer just as a camper yeah. to be like, wow, that was awesome. Like we really had such a good time. And, yeah. you know, and it's, I'm still, I still know so many of the, of the, I guess women now, but girls back then where I was like, oh my gosh, like we're still friends. And yeah. that's just really cool to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. It's on, it's on, it's unreal. That's, it's so unreal how, how you stay friends all those years later. Oh yeah. You, you look at the alumni page on Facebook, there's 650 people on there. Like, Is there really? Yeah. And it's like, wow. you know, that's, and you, you you scroll through and I mean, there's a lot of people I don't know that came like that were before my time. There's people that, you know, I don't know that were after my time. Um, but when you're going through and you're seeing all these names and stuff, you're like, oh my God, I remember, you know, that, that, that and you can think of a hundred stories and like, it's so cool that people still want to be connected, you know, oh, yeah. after all that time and that you never shed that slipper thing, you know, it's, it's crazy. Absolutely. It's also crazy. crazy to look at some of the names and you realize like in, in my mind, when I think about these people, I'm still 10, 11 years old and in all of them. Like, yeah. oh, oh my gosh, I wonder what she's up to now. Like, it's right? still like you still have like that child, like all of these counselors who are larger mm -hmm. than life when you were there. Like, so that's yeah. always kind of cool to go back and be like, I wonder what they're doing now and check it out and see how many people look exactly the same. That's yep. the most fascinating point. I'm like, wow, you look yep. exactly the same. Yep. So I think, um, but it's just such a great way. I know, Sam, you do so much work for that too, to make the, you know, the, the alumni community bring everyone together. So thank I'm you trying. for that, because it really <laughs> yeah. is cool. Right, it's awesome though, and it's hard I, to get everyone kind of, you know, in the same place to talk about stuff. Well, yeah, and I mean, part of the thing that like kind of drove me into it, like Mike staff pushed me to, like when we talked uh, like years and years and years and years ago, he's yeah. like, dude, you gotta become a member. You gotta become a member. And I was like, you know, in my head, I'm thinking like a counselor, like the members, they don't know anything. Like it's always us versus them. I'm not one of those people. And then I became a member and I found out there's a whole lot that happens behind the scenes to make Golden Slipper actually happen. Oh, yeah. And then I, I realized like, you know, well, this just makes sense. How come not more of my friends are members? And then there's kind of this in-between void where there's the people that that do decide to join and like as a member and do stuff like behind the scenes, but there was nothing in between where like, okay, if you're not into the work part of it, but there's still the community. So like, why yeah. not bring everybody together for the community, make that part of it. Then maybe they'll want to join Then Maybe they'll help out other ways. They can yeah. volunteer time because with camp, we have to raise so much money and we have to, to go out and find stuff to make things happen because we're nonprofit. Like there's a whole community of people that we never tap and it's the people that love camp the most, you know, For and, sure. and it's not about money or, you know, or any, it's just, you know, you care about it. You love it. Do something to help. And, and it's keeping and the people, tradition going. Right. Exactly. And I mean, it does, exactly. and all the traditions evolve. And I do love, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to go up uh, throughout yeah. the course of the past couple of years, like alumni day. It was great to go up when my mom and dad had their retirement. Oh, but, that um, was the best. It's so cool. I, just some of the new traditions that everybody is starting, and <laughs> I cried. And your mom kept looking at me because I was sitting right in the front with all the members and stuff from the board. And <laughs> and your mom's on, you know, and she's looking at me, and I'm like, I'm five too. Like you know, I couldn't even handle it. Couldn't. I just remember it. my dad getting <laughs> so nervous when I got up on the microphone because he's like, Oh yeah, oh not that one. I was like, Are you no. kidding me? Hey everybody, what's up? Um, yep. but it's just cool too, like seeing all, like, I know we, you know, have the traditions that we love and, mm -hmm. but every year it does change a little bit. And that is yeah. such a good thing. Like you want yeah. it to evolve and for the, the people who are going there to find ways to make it their own. So yeah. I'm always like fascinated by, like, I remember when the first, I love that you can watch the things on bunk one and they show you everyone. Yeah. I was always watching like as a parent, like, where are my boys? told Danny kept giving us peace signs that we knew he was happy. So he managed to sneak a peace sign into every single picture, which I was like, love oh, it. Love this dance. Love it. But I remember like in the beginning when Jimmy first went to camp, I was like, wait a second. What do you mean they don't play Love Shack in the dining hall? Like I was like offended. Like, why would you yeah. not play Love Shack in the dining hall? Because, you know, 20 years ago, that's all we played in the dining hall was Love Shack. Yeah. And Danny's like, oh, or Jimmy was like, I don't, mom, nobody plays Love Shack in the dining hall. And I was like, 
well, that's just great. And he's like, no, but they Blasphemy. play whatever the other yeah. song was. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. Oh, well, as long as you're dancing to something in the dining hall and it has like, you know, kind of like the song of summer, you get it going. Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't realize. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm upset that you're not dancing to the B-52s. Like, oh my <laughs> God, Marissa, take it down enough. But it's, right? you know, everyone's going to have their own memories. They're going to have their own, I swear. They're going to have their own, <laughs> have their own thing. And I think that that's yeah. so great. Each year is it kind of like, to see what 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 travels with you through all of the different years, you know, yeah. like what stays, yeah. and it's okay if some memories are just for that one tiny window of time. Like I kind of mm -hmm. like having some that are just for those of us who are there at that little pocket. Yeah, you know, I just feel like that's you know that's ours. That's our yeah. special little memory, and it's okay if not everybody gets it. It's like our own little inside joke, and every every year is going to have that. I I love that, and I love that song of summer. Like we don't talk about that enough. Every year there's like a song because yep. time stops in June and then mm -hmm. resumes at the end of <laughs> August. So, so whatever was really popular in June. And if you remember the MTV cycle back when they played music, you know, that would have been, that would have been way not cool two weeks later because something new was out, but that was all we had whole summer, you know? So I remember drops of Jupiter was probably the most ridiculous summer for me as far as the length of time and the number of times that song which was played. Which one was that? With, from Train, Drops of Jupiter. I think it was like 2000 oh, I think or like 99, something like that. 98 then, was the Train song that was from Lee, Virginia. the City of Angels song. That was a song from no. City of Angels that was sad. Oh, no. Iris? Goo Goo Dolls? Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, God, what was it? I can a picture. I'm picturing Alice and Ben singing it in the dining yes. hall because it was all. Yes. You know the song I'm talking about. Yeah. Alice and Hang Ben. On. That's why I, I remember it because it was Alice. I give yeah. up forever. Oh no, that was Google Dolls. Something is that yeah. Google Dolls? That's Google Dolls. They're all the yeah. same in my old lady yeah. brain. Um, but it's just funny because it was like that was your like this song of yep. something where you're like, oh my gosh, like this was it. This Everybody it. will play it. Yeah. Like this is now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, the summer of 1997. It was mm -hmm. the summer of Spice Girls. Yeah. And I was in Bunk K. Do you Game know on. how many times <laughs> I listened to the Spice Girls? Just and probably oh, just one of them. Oh my god. Right? <laughs> Slam it to the left if you're having a good time. Shake uh -huh. it to the right if you're ready to feel fine. <laughs> Cheek it to the front. Ha ha. No. Oh my God. It mm -hmm. was constant. But can yep. I tell you? I said when I hear that song, I don't change the channel. I'm like, boys. Yep. This is a song of summer. <laughs> 1997, y'all. Like, 1997, <laughs> Bunke. This is what we were listening it. to. What's up? Oh, yeah. I, that's all we I had on. 98, I remember vividly. Um, Phil Hoffman was one of my counselors in, in, yes. in 98. And, um, and he had an off period, but we were in the village for some reason, but he was off. And we asked him if we could come in, like, to go to the bathroom or something like that, because I think we were at, like, Low Challenge or... You know, mm -hmm. just right there. And he goes, yeah, but shut up. And I'm like, what? And he's sitting there with a CD player listening to Victory from Puff Daddy and the Family, No Way Out album. <laughs> I'll never forget this. And he's going, <laughs> rewinding it. And he's <laughs> rewinding it. And he's like, I'm trying to learn the lyrics. Hold up. <laughs> like, and, and this went on. And I just remember him sitting there like, what are you proving? You know, and, uh, of two levels above. Because back in our day, there right. was no yeah. lyrics A to nope. Z dot com. No, you nope. had to listen and, and you had to write and it down. Was, and the CD that he had didn't have the lyrics in it. Because back then you had to open the book up. And the book had, you know, with like like accordion style. And it had all the lyrics yep. in it. But like, good luck keeping up with, with, um, with, with you know, a lot of the rap songs back then on that it, you needed you needed a book it was there's so many words and this yeah. is how he this is how he spent his off period was his listening period. trying to memorize and you could hear it like on the tape <laughs> you know like go backwards For, forget about it but that was it like that was the song he needed to know every word to that and to this day from 1998 being in that bunk i know every word to that song Gee, and, all right then mm -hmm. And right, listen, that's your one ridiculous. Mm -hmm, that's or, uh, it. Spice well, World or whatever it was. Oh was, yeah. yeah, that was it's. Oh, it's nuts. It's the songs from camp were crazy. Like that, you know, you get. I mean, Dimmler used to wake us up to um, the Jimi Hendrix national anthem, and and then that's I had a good him, one. I was good, and then I had him in bunk eleven the next year. He was my counselor there too. Same thing, you know. And it's we had that, and then I had Friedman in thirteen. 
and I think we were getting woken up to like Nerf Herd or Good Charlotte. You know, or that was when the pop punk thing became it, and then that was it for a long time. Uh huh. Uh, yep. Yeah, oh, I was. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. But so we we talked about how camp sculpted you and what your you know uh uh you know the what impacted you and all that kind of stuff. So we talked about the fact that you're on TV. Yeah. How in God's name did that happen? Because like. I, like knowing you from 20 plus years ago <laughs> to now, I remember getting a text. It was like a text or a Facebook message or something, you know, turn on the TV, Marissa's on TV. And I was like, oh God, what happened? I'm thinking it's the news. <laughs> like, you know? Fair. Very fair, fair. Right? Exactly. So, so not the news, legitimately had a job on TV. I, did. So, I do. Yeah. But it's funny, it all it has a camp tie-in. Did you right. know this? I did not. So I don't know this when, story. When I, I went to college, my degree was in television and film. And my dad was like, listen, what are you going to do with that? And I was like, I don't know, but it sounds great. You know, this is yeah. what we're going to do. So it was the summer after I graduated from college. I guess it was the mm -hmm. 2001. And Neil Grable, who yep. is was like the Golden Slipper president at the time, also happened to be um senior legal counsel for qvc which is the wow. television shopping channel it's based in westchester pennsylvania and um, my dad was like well neil can drop off your 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 resume yeah. to qvc and neil's like listen i can get you in the door like just get you in it but you have to get the job and like all this right. is up to you so i'm like no problem neil like i'm gonna work really hard just get get me in the door so i wound up getting a job honest to goodness in the qvc warehouse where okay. I can drive, drove a cherry picker. Yep. I physically unpacked the shows and built the products poorly with, you know, the screwdrivers. If I had to build like a for race fans only like mm -hmm. car carousel to show all the NASCAR stuff and yep. steam and shirts and everything. And then I wound up going backstage and that's actually where I met my husband, Jim. He got called in on his day off to, uh, to show me what to do because I was new backstage, didn't know what I was doing and kept walking that's in front great. of the camera. And then fast forward all the years, I really just moved my way up through QVC. And then about seven years ago, Jim and I decided, I said, you know, listen, I really want to try to do something else. Like I love this whole venue of television shopping, but I think I can do it on camera. And I just, I need to kind of take a leap of faith and see if someone will hire me. So I did. I left QVC and was hired um, shortly afterwards by a company, It Cosmetics, mm -hmm. which is now the number one beauty brand at QVC. What, what? And, yeah. um, I wound up starting just going on air there, but going on like a channel that nobody was watching called Beauty IQ, where it was a lot of fun, but I could kind of figure it out. And then three yeah. years, I guess it was maybe three years ago, um, I wound up in like the middle of the day, like on a Saturday morning, like the best time that you can have. And I went on air and I remember Tommy, was, I think Tommy's the one who took a picture of himself. Don't say I never did anything for you of him watching QVC yep. and with me on the camera. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's what I do now. And I never would have been like the idea of doing that. It's so funny because sometimes people get really nervous at the idea of being on television. And I think oh, honestly, like all the years at Golden Slipper, like getting up in front of everybody, standing on your chair and cheering, teaching yeah. tweens Olympic songs really kind of builds up your thick skin so that you can yeah. handle that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, and then even more fun. So my sister, Christina, who is always one of the most gorgeous girls of Golden Slipper Camp, she models for QVC now. So sometimes you see her on air as a model. I saw I'm you on guys there together. About stuff. Bizarre, right? Where you're like, right. hey, here we are. So um, it's just really like it's it's been such a such a blessing to be there. One, because, you know, my I met my husband there right. and, you know, it's been that all these years out. later yeah. that worked out all these years <laughs> later. Um, but yeah, it's like such a, it's such, it's such a strange gig to try to explain to you. Like, what are you doing? You're like, are you familiar with QVC? Yeah, I am. Um, I present products, especially because I don't look anything like right now. This does not look like TV Marissa. Right. TV Marissa usually has like curled cat eye, like maybe contoured, you know, much more. Yeah, this which is, is hilarious Marissa. because <laughs> no, this is this is Marissa dinner dance, Marissa. Like right now, dinner this is more Marissa, dressed up right? than I ever was. <laughs> Golden, Golden Sliver. I don't wear makeup. I wear like sweatpants every day or mesh shorts and a t-shirt. My umbros back in the day, like umbros. it's so funny. So the fact that I'm the one out of all the people who we knew, Golden Slipper, 
The fact that I'm the one who works in beauty now is endlessly amusing to a lot of people where they're like, <laughs> how did this happen? And I'm like, listen, guys, you never know where you're going to wind up. So here we are. Sure. But um, yeah, it's definitely, it's been, it's been pretty cool. It's a great um, opportunity to meet people and talk about things. And yeah. if anybody ever has any question about skincare or beauty, just hit me up and I will do my best to guide you in the right direction. Cause I've learned a thing or two about a thing or two about all this, uh, about right. all this anti-aging skincare through the years. Who would have thought? Right. But I think this is also true. Why I look younger than you, Sam. Yeah, you definitely do. Because I have been do. investing in the skincare yeah. and the SPF 50 every yeah, day for the past at least 10 years. And life just, you know, 2020 hit me in the face with a shovel. And this is, <laughs> this is what's, I am teasing you. You are perfect. And I love the beard. Hey, thank you. Thank you. You I love the beard. It's not as cool. Tommy's got a a blue beard going on right now. And my kids absolutely love it. (laughs) Well, of course. Well, he's Uncle Tommy. He's always going to be cooler than you. Just give that right on. He will 100% be cooler than me forever. Mm -hmm, That's totally fine. Funny story. Like, you know, when when Amelia was was really little, um, you know, she wouldn't go to people. Like, like just go with people places, like not without us being there or whatever. She, something happened and we were at camp visiting and um, I think she needed to get a bandaid or something. And your mom just put her arm out like that. She grabbed her hand and walked away from us as though we did not exist. And I was like, universal appeal of Maureen. And and I was like, you know what? That's it. Oh, she'll do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, it, it was, you know, it just, it solidified that like everything I knew as a child was, was right. It's like, you know, these are the people that like. These are the people. That's They'll it. They'll take care They're of you. Perfect people. Yeah. The O'Neills will always take care of you. They're, and I, I love that, you know, and the same thing with Uncle Tommy and Uncle Spoon. Can we, can we video call Uncle Tommy and Uncle Spoon? Every day they ask me to video call. <laughs> do it. Do yeah. it every day. I do. Yeah. Well, I can't do it every day, but. But uh, sure, but, you can but, listen. You but, and your wife need to get yourself like a glass of wine, sit down, and be like, guys, go call Uncle Tommy and Uncle Spoon and then leave yeah. them and just leave parenting them. advice it. from this one. That's it. That's it. <laughs> My you know, parenting book's coming out next month. <laughs> for, for all the kids that don't know that Uncle Tommy is a big softy because I mean, I know that he's got his like persona or whatever. He reads Wait, he's books a persona to... where he's not, a, where he's a tough guy. Well, I mean, he, you know, he's a little bit, he's a little bit more like brash than, you know, than Spoon, who's like, I love oh. everyone, you know, but okay, but okay, Tommy, I can see that. But Tommy will read books to my kids on video calls when quarantine started. Get out. Where to go? Buy the same books he's reading. <laughs> Probably. We're, they're learning to read together. They're like the little chapter books, you know. Now, nah. but but yeah, him and Megan have been like phenomenal with 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 our. Oh, they're kids. so and, good. They're so. Yeah. And talk about another camp romance right there. There's right. another one. Yeah, you know, I mean, so I wanna excited. Do, I want to do one of these, like one of these kind of uh, things, almost like uh, there's a channel Middle Gr- uh, Jubilee that do like Middle Ground, where they'll have a bunch of people like from different yeah. scenarios come up. I want to do something like that for um all of the camp marriages and just there's a lot of them all through the, the years show up you know on a on a video call like that that oh yeah that would have yeah because i can think of you know probably 20 couples off the top of my head that all met at camp you know in some form or another and like it's, it's pretty it's, cool it's wild it's wild you know and then but one of the questions i had for you with that like not with that part of it because you didn't meet at camp but like how is it now you were a camper, you were a counselor, and now you're a parent of a camper. What is that like? Because I'm it's, almost there, and I'm I'm not prepared. You know, it's really cool. So I we were really fortunate because the first couple of summers my parents were there, right, so it was like okay, like this is, and it's it's just it's a little bit different. And I realized that for a lot of people who were like super nervous, and you know, and my parents were there. And please know because I think it was so funny where it was like. So what bunk's Jimmy going to be? And I'm like, I don't know. We're going to find out when we get there because Tom did not tell me anything in advance. So don't think there's ever any special treatment. I never got any information early. No, you guys got However, it worse. You guys got it worse being, worse. yeah, from but, him. Absolutely. But what's so, but now like with, um, like last summer, you know, it was the first summer where Spoon was, was going to be the director. And I realized that like all the years and how much I love Golden Slipper. Yes, my family was part of it, but my love and trust for the organization really wasn't wasn't tied to them like it was i knew 
the the people who I was sending my beloved children to were going to take care of my children as well as my own family had. Mm-hmm. So I knew that, you know, Spoon would make sure that everything was okay. And of yeah. course, the Tommy was there and to kind of keep an eye on things. And I knew that, you know, Adam Kramaroff would make sure. And I think that, you know, anyone else, like if you're, especially if you're alumni and you, those yeah. are some familiar names to you, you're like, hold on, like they take care of every single child, like they're their own. And yeah. I think that was something that I knew, yep. like in the back of my head, but it wasn't until, you know, the boys went to camp and they're like, this was the best summer like we had so much fun and this 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 and they had such a great time and I was like you know what like this is it just I know there's always concern when there's like a transition and I had it the same as everybody else and then when like being in the middle of it Danny was devastated when camp was canceled this year because he was like well camp's still going on and I'm like listen kiddo like there's just a lot like let's just start to prepare for it not happening he's like well then I'm definitely going next year And his only concern with missing this year is that he's worried that next year he'll be in Caden and he missed his last year in Vogelson. And I'm Uh, like, listen, kiddo, the Gaga tip will still be there. You can borrow it. Like, it'll be there. It'll all be okay. But it's like just knowing that, you know, everyone really is like they, they, every child is really taking away. And I remember being a counselor and just like fiercely loving every kid in my bunk. Like I had to take care of you and all those kids in that Gaga Mm -hmm. pit to be like, ah, hold on, this is what we're going to do. And just, you know, um, so I think like as a parent, the only thing that gets kind of hard is when like, you're seeing all the stuff in the dining hall and like, you're looking at all the pictures, you do get a little heart sick because you miss it. Yeah. And it's not like you miss it, like you want to be there and part of their adventure right now. Right. You miss it because you know it's so special what they're doing. And it is that little pocket of time that you can't go back and redo. And yeah. they're in the middle of it. So it's just like, it's bittersweet in that way where you're like, oh, they're having the best time. Oh, it's MTV night. I wonder what their song's going to be. Oh, right. is it Pizza Bagel Day? <laughs> Quick, right. stock them up. <laughs> like, you just remember all that. But, but I'll never get you. Send it back. And I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) Yeah. I'll tell you what, from eating on boys' side and then being a waiter on girls' side, y'all were ferocious. Ferocious. Really? I I yo, no joke. I got hit with those metal pans so many times. Like I barely ever sat down because like Oh no, you gotta keep it coming. Yeah, to keep it going. And plus, like, I... I didn't I get watch... to be this size, Sam, by not eating regularly. You best be bringing that tray back with some food. That's, that, absolutely. <laughs> Especially if it was, like, if it was something like a fan favorite, like Nuggets or, like, something like that. A game done. Uber. Like, done. But, yeah. It's crazy. So that story is is validated with someone who is a waiter. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, you know that, that tray would fly just as fast as you put it down. It would fly right You knew down. it. Oh, Crazy. yeah. We knew what we yep. were doing. We Absolutely. knew how to work that system. I Absolutely. also laugh at the boys. We were making some kind of, what was it? Have you ever had like those little Mio juice things where like you squeeze it in and you can oh, make yeah. your, the one that we found this one flavor. Oh, my God. Was it? Orange tangerine. It tastes mm-hmm. like the bug juice from back at Golden Slipper. Where now yes. I have my own where nobody else is allowed to have it. I'm like, it tastes Perfect. like bug juice. And Jimmy's like, what is bug juice? I'm like. Hello, what's the name of the Golden Slipper Juice? It was Bug Juice. Like, you don't even know. Bug Juice. And it was, and you could tell, like, if it was watered down Bug Juice, you were just like, no. But if you got it, it was that super saturated color. You're like, this is the good stuff. This is the real one, right? Orange Tangerine Mio, friends. It will take you right on back. Love it. Squeeze that in there. And I'm like, oh. So I have my own. No one else is allowed to have it because I'm like, "Mm, it's my Bug Juice. So now it's like loaded up with vitamins and caffeine. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. whatever. That was just straight sugar and food coloring. So much yep. better. <laughs> you know what, you know what the, the, the care package uh, uh, that we would get back then, when you would get the tub of powder to make like lemonade or iced tea with while you were in the bunk, because all like, you know, drinks You'll were see. a commodity. That was like a high value commodity back then. Like if you can get soda, see. game yeah. over. Like we sent, I would make sure we sent the boys up really good stuff for camp. Yeah. And then the one thing where, like, being having our parents, I can't, we never got care packages. It was totally lame. Yeah. Right. However, my uncle Frank always sent us a care package. And the best, this honest to God, it was from Hickory Farms. Like, you know, oh, that like, nice. like cheese log the, the or whatever. Now, why? And, yeah. I love him. Uncle Frank's an amazing person. But uh, this Hickory, I'm like, I get one care package a summer. And it is from. 
Hickory Farms. Wow. Terrible. 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 <laughs> now I'm like, ooh, meat and cheeses? That sounds amazing. But back then I was like, meats and cheeses? First of all, this is a kosher camp. And second of all, what 10 year olds eating Hickory Farms? Yeah, none of them. None so of strange. them. Yeah. For me, <laughs> I was, I used to love my mom would send the care package in like a beer box. So, oh, like, nice. they, so the counselors would be like, yeah, highly I'm questionable. Carry that. Like, what's up? What's going on in here? It's like Corona. It's like, no, nah, it's Pringles. Like, you know, <laughs> no, Dana Koppel's mom used to send mm -hmm. up two of everything one set for her and another set for the counselors. And yep. I remember Dana be like, this is the one that's for you. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. We don't have to secretly steal your food from this middle room. Amazing. So I was like, right. oh, Dana, your mom's nice. everything. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff you remember all these years. Yeah, decomp is no up. joke. Yep, no oh joke. Oh my gosh. Yep, I love so it. Good. My mom would put like newspaper clippings, like articles and stuff that she she knew I had like no no like tie to news or the outside world. Like what was you happening? Know? Like what were kind of little things that were going on? And I remember I was such a big comedy fan as a kid and she sent me an article and she's like, I'm really sorry, Walter Matthau died. And like, that's all it said. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, ah. <laughs> Like that was it. No. Like the odd couple. What are you doing to me? I'm a camp. Don't tell me bad news. I don't want to know bad news. No bad news. news. Oh my god. Tell me like That's yeah, funny. We, we found aliens or something. Don't tell me what we, like one of my favorite comedians died. Like, what's wrong with you? But yeah, no, the care package is an underrated thing. You know, it's uh now I mean they probably just get an Amazon Prime packages sent up to camp now. Like it's a whole oh now it's like super ball. easy. I'm like, oh yeah. back in the day. <laughs> Melissa kids, so if you want hard. hickory farms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so great <laughs> i had no idea that he was sending you hickory farms that's so funny crackers like, oh yeah right? crackers mm -hmm. uh, it's perfect there was no it's sugar perfect. in that box at all no sugar no. that's a mistake no. nope oh it's like for <sighs> me a care package is like did you ever see the movie heavyweights when the yeah. kids go to camp and it was like you know all right kids unload and it was just like all the chocolate everything you hide it inside the bunk inside the bunk beds and like that to me is a care package. Whatever was in that in that scene in that movie, that's what belongs in the box that you sent to the kids. Give them as much sugar as you can. They're running it off. Like, oh my gosh! They're everybody crashed. So much, you know. But so it didn't matter. That's so fun. Oh man. So if you had some advice to tell either a current staff member or camper or something, just like with all this going on, this 2020 thing. I mean, you know, one minute it's, you know, you know, the pandemic starts and then murder hornets and then like everything. It's just, you know, it's every month, you know, I'm waiting. I think, I think the aliens are next month. And then I can't even after that, who knows, you know, like, so before the aliens come, like what kind of, you know, what kind of advice do you have for the current camper or staff member in their, in their formative years, you know, to, to handle this, separation for the first time well i think my advice would be just in general this is something that i work on myself even at 40 like all these years later um don't rush time like yeah. i realize that like we want to count down to next summer or you know everything is so crazy and you know it just feels like when is this going to be over yeah and don't rush this time because even though it's so crazy and it's so weird, but it's still, it's still a gift. So whatever we can do to make the most out of it, because I know it's, it's really hard and it stinks. And trust me, I wish it was so much different than how it is. And we're all yeah. like, we're all feeling that. Um, but don't like when I was growing up, I always had a calendar and I would cross off every day. Like once the day was done, like this day's done X, this day's done X it, through college, this day's done X. And it wasn't until I found out I was pregnant with my son, Jimmy, who's 14 and a half now. So he'll be 15 in January. It wasn't until I found out I was pregnant with him that I stopped crossing wow. days off on the calendar. And because I realized, I was like, I don't want to rush time. Like, I want to enjoy all of these minutes. And then I was like, wait a second. Why did I do that for all of the other years? Like, literally, like, last day of camp's here, Xing off each day. I don't know why I crossed them off. Or I was always counting down. Or like, how am I going to get to the weekend? And how am I going to get to the end of the day? Like, I mean, you can look forward to lunch, yeah. but don't don't try to rush too far behind that. Even yeah. if it's, you know, 
everything about this year is going to be weird for all of us, but mm -hmm. don't, don't wish it away. I guess that would be, that would be my advice. Like don't wish it away because it's still going to be special in its own way. So yeah. we just have to, you know, just deal with that together. But that's, that would be, that would be my, and that's something that I'm working on too, where I'm like, oh, I just can't wait till it's Christmas and this is done or Hanukkah or this is done, you know? And right. for me, I'm just like, nope, how about I just enjoy Today. right now? Today, yeah. I'm talking to Sam. This is great. Like that's, yeah. you know, one thing at a time. So it's hard, but I do yeah. think, don't don't wish it to be summer 2021 because there's a whole lot of life to live before then. It's going to be weird and strange, but don't wish those days away. Yeah, I'm with you. I You know, it's as hard as all of this is. The nice thing is just like a camp, it's just on a bigger scale. Everybody's in it together. Like, yeah. So it's not, you know, it's no one doesn't understand that it's that it's difficult, you know? Yeah. But I was thinking about when when we were starting to, to kind of come up with these ideas like to do the you know the talks and whatever it's like i had that realization one night i was literally laying in bed like thinking about like what are we going to do we gonna do this podcast like what's up and it was just like oh my god all of these people never had that first summer away from camp sting like where you don't know what oh. to do yourself, you know and it's like well who who knows better than the people that have oh, had yeah. that for for however many years we've been away. I mean, like for me, 05 was my last year and 06 yeah. was awful. Well, can I tell you, I would every, uh, for about 10 years after I was done camp in mid August every year, it's my least favorite time of year is mid August. Mm -hmm. And forever, and I like back to school. I like yeah. school. I like fall. I'm not like a like summer or nothing. Yeah. And I was like, why am I so depressed in mid August? And I'm like, oh my God. It's because I'm I'm like literally programmed to be devastated because camp right. is ending, even yep. though I haven't been to camp for five, 10 years. Right. So finally I like had this like epiphany and I was like, Marissa, this is getting silly. Have yourself one good cry and then you need to be done. <laughs> it on. was 10 years, 10 was, I guess at this point it was 10 years past camp. It was by 12 years ago this summer because I was pregnant with my son, Danny. And I was just like, I need to just be, done with the tears like yeah this is silly but it's a very real thing because it is you feel things so intensely yeah when you're at camp and you do that post camp sting but the only difference is is no one's having fun at camp this summer without you right. Right. <laughs> there yeah. is no new sam newsham there at camp who's now yeah. playing music there's no yeah. replacement because it is weird when you look back at camp and you see the new version of yourself oh absolutely you know what i mean where you're yeah. like wait a minute like That's hang on me. A yeah except she's only 17 like oh it's crazy when you look yep. back and you're like you can see people or different iterations of friends you know and you're like oh oh it's like the new generation of whomever right yeah oh that's the new josie i get that like yeah that, right that's fair like you know <laughs> or, uh huh. yeah kenny allman 2.0 i got you like you know like, oh, i'm <laughs> like, seeing this I wait a that. minute mm -hmm. yep for sure for sure and I love seeing like when I got when I became a member and I would see like the new upper staff people and you come up and you're and like so in my head like it, it's always going to be like Ray is a village leader and Adam's a village leader and like it's Uncle Scott is always going to be like you know council boys yeah. yell in my head anybody after that like no one else deserves those rooms you know like to me like they yeah, well, they still different. have that like celebrity level in your mind you still see exactly. them as a kid even yeah. though you know as you get older we all become that same age but it's right. like no they're still like that that celebrity yeah golden slipper person you're like oh that's them well Remember? And i had i had campers that became village leaders and like you know they were my kids when they were in i you know bunk two or bunk you know 12 or whatever and like then they were oh that gets weird oh, oh yeah. that's yo wacko <laughs> it's so crazy like i but, see i've been through that now where it's like the campers of my campers are now things <laughs> right right yeah <laughs> like uh-huh yep i've been exactly. many moons later but i but, think it's all fun and you know yeah it, but that's how it how it needs to be and it's great to know mm -hmm. like that's why when you are a counselor it's so important yeah. To really, even if you're only like 17, 18, 19 years old, to realize that these kids 
are looking up to you the same way that we looked yeah. up to them and that you looked up to your counselors and that like you are playing a role in shaping yeah. their lives. So while camp is super fun and there's so much that goes on and it's just like this great, you know, adventure, if you will, um, there's still a lot of responsibility that goes along with it because it's, you know, yeah. they're going to remember this stuff. Like you remember going out on the boat. Yeah. That was how many, or 1998, was that 22 summers ago? 22 years ago, yeah. <laughs> and that mm -hmm. stays with you to be like, oh my gosh, like yep. we went out on the rowboat together because yep. that's, so it's, you know, it's just, it's important to just, just remember yeah. that it's more than just a summer job. We had that moment like not that long ago when uh, Jess Chaffel got married. And and so Jess Chaffel mar well, married Dave Kane and they met at camp. And they, you know, mm -hmm. I remember the dinner dances they went to together and like, you know, all that kind of Love stuff. It. My band played at their wedding. Like oh we God, were the so wedding weird. band, you know? And it's like, how crazy is that? Like, just. I remember too, like I Abby and Lee Siegel. Band. That's where I feel it, seeing oh, them. Because yeah. I knew Abby Siegel when she was like four. Like mm -hmm. when she had a mother's helper and she was at camp oh. and she loved corned beef. We used to feed her corned beef. I've never seen a kid eat that much corned beef. Stuff you remember. <laughs> Abby Heller loved yep. corned beef. But like yep. you see the picture of her and and Lee, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I remember you guys as kids. Like Rachel, right. um, yeah, Rachel Frank, which for a second I was like Rachel or yeah. Sarah, because I know it's their yeah. sister. Yeah. So like Rachel Frank and and Jake Lee. And I'm just like, what? Well, like in my mind, like I remember when you guys were like kids mm -hmm. kind of hanging out together and now like you have these beautiful kids and you know everyone's right. so grown up and it's just i don't know it's it's well, weird but at the same time it's so like happy and joyful that i'm okay with the weirdness oh yeah well so on the on the alumni committee thing like like two of the, the two of the people that like i work with the, the most on all this kind of stuff is the Friedman. so i talked to matt mm -hmm. and steph friedman steph magnus for anybody who didn't know that she married matt friedman but uh, Fun fact: Their dad did my engagement ring. Jim went down, so my engagement whoa. ring. Er, Ernie, <laughs> Ernie did the ring. Ernie. Yes. Nice. <laughs> yep, that's great. Well, so funny story with that. So my first year at camp, he was a CIT in bunk nine, and I was mm -hmm. in bunk ten. So talk about a stacked double bunk. I mean, between Mark Moulton and Phil in my bunk, and and Dimler as a CIT. You had Friedman and Jared Ben and Aaron Sachs in bunk nine. Yeah. <laughs> fire. Just straight fire. It was the best bunk ever. And so uh let's call it. I grew up, I'm a, you know, I'm a I'm an adult person. And my dad, you know, he, he was a lot older and, and always went to the Masons. He was in the lodge. And he I turned 21, he hands me this thing and he goes, sign this. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what it is. You know, dad said to sign it. I signed it. He goes, you're going to lodge with me next month. And I'm like, I'm doing the what now? I don't want to go hang out with his old people, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, old people, Ernie and my dad had been friends for like 30 Get years. Get out, you know? really? Yeah, like, no joke. And, and Ernie's dad was actually my dad's really good friend from forever ago. I go to lodge, I come in, and the, and the president of the lodge, the worshipful master of the lodge, is Matt Friedman, who was my like CIT my first year at camp. He's the you know in charge of the lodge when I come. Oh my up. gosh! And, and fun fact, he sits me down after I come in, you know, after my like first meeting and all that kind of stuff. And he goes, "Did you know that Golden Slipper started in this lodge?" And I was like, "What? Like what are you like? What? Don't even lie! Don't lie to me like that! Like you know?" And he goes, "No, no, no." It used to be to be a member of the Golden Slipper Club, you had to be a Mason. And the really? Mason started in at our actual lodge, like because we're, we're we're Williamson Corinthians Lodge 368. Back okay. then it was just the Williamson's Lodge before okay. all the merging. But the members of Golden Slippers who started Golden Slipper were in Williamson's Lodge, and it started at a lodge meeting. So you accidentally stumbled upon the, the history. You like wound up at, you know, the By Independence accident. Hall of, yep. of, of Golden, Golden Slipper. Slipper. And, I, and, and to walk into that by accident, my dad had been a member for 40 years, you know, and to have like someone who was a CIT in your double bunk as like the guy in charge who's giving yeah. you this history lesson. I was like, oh, man, all of this is just meant to be. Like, you know, like, it's, you know, the camp gods work in very mysterious ways. 
you know, to to bring everybody together again. It's like I was supposed to 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 reconnect with Matt. It had been a lot of years, you know. And then this summer was supposed to be his son's first year at camp. And well, it's you know like, what? Next summer will be an awesome first year. It's going to be an awesome summer. Yeah. <laughs> but right, yeah. it just I, has to be. It has to be, and and I can only imagine what that what those two crazy people of Spoon and Tommy are are cooking up in their heads for next summer. I, I can only imagine how insane it's going to be because like for, for Tommy to have a whole year to think of what to do, like it's terrifying to me, whatever he's going to come up with. Well, they should but also be tapping awesome. into all the, all the, like the, uh, the counselors and the kids who are like, you know what we should do? Because yeah. I don't know about you, but it's all these years later, I'm still like, you know what they should do with camp? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, they've been writing it all down. She's like, you know what, yeah. guys, what are we doing to make this most memorable summer ever? And I bet mm-hmm. you there are so many ideas that would come in from the people who are actually going to be there and can make it happen. That's pretty right. awesome. Why not? Why not? I think, yeah, I think that that would, I, I think it's going to be awesome. And I can't wait to watch how that all unfolds. I know Spoon is rearing to go for next year. Oh, yeah. I was talking to him the other night and Tommy, you know, Tommy, it just it just bleeds out of him you know he's just it's all it's so much camp in him it's un, unbelievable but yeah i i love that we got to talk i love that like you got to hear some of these stories and you know the people that don't know that are there now like you know the the o'neill family was like i mean it is this dynasty family of camp but unfortunately for the kids they got they had it harder than everybody else that was friend <laughs> of the kids by by Big T.O., you know, by Big Tom. Like, yeah, you, you guys had to work so hard to be as awesome because I know he didn't give you he didn't give you any slack. And I and, you know, well, you know what? Crazy. I think one of the things Tom, my parents are awesome people. And Amazing. I think one of the things that, you know, they always wanted us which is really hard but was like to to represent the best of them and that's really hard to do so i know we tried really hard to do it all the time but especially as teenagers you you, you drop the ball sometimes we did their yeah. best that we could but um i just love hearing all the stories about all the people who have just you know felt the love of my parents through the years and just yeah. felt so taken care of by them and I know that as the years go by and as this like new generation of leadership is coming in, because that's a 30 year yeah. run that they had. Um, I just know, like, I feel that love from, from the, the current team that that's yeah. up there just as much with my son. So yeah. I'm just, you know, excited and just to see what's next. I'm a big believer. Like you got to evolve and do, and do different right. things and refresh. So maybe that's what this is going to be. This pause. Yeah. Yeah. refresh and then come back better than ever and i'm sure yeah. there are going to be ways for folks to share their ideas as you're as you're yeah. cooking them up you're sitting at home you're like you know what we should do yeah why not do them we're gonna have you know a whole a whole summer to make up for yeah live in large so, next in 2021 all that time to plan right i mean I think oh it's yeah it's gonna be crazy i'm looking forward to seeing what happens i'm i'm excited for your kids like that's it, it's it's a it's a cool i mean as hard as this year is next year is going to be so sweet it's going to be awesome it's going to be great it's like a whole renewed be, yeah you're going to treasure it you know what yeah. i mean like there is a little bit of taking it for granted where you're like oh like this is what we do and now i think right. you know across the board in a lot of different ways you're like wait this is like so special like even yeah. like the small things are special now that they yeah. you know you didn't necessarily think of them before so Hopefully, you know, when everyone gets back up to, to Golden Slipper, every little thing will be special, even the stuff that was, you know, maybe not so special before, like that 745 wake up call to uh, Jimi Hendrix playing the national anthem. You're yep. like, oh, it's so early. Now it's people like, oh, it's a new day. Let's do yeah, this. Let's so, do it. We'll t- get up and do it. will be great. Right? That's so But awesome. thank you so much That's for awesome. having me, Sam. I really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. Definitely. I, I love I love hearing the stories and we could do this, I know, for hours and hours and hours. So we can <laughs> there's nothing stopping us from doing a part two after we get through a couple other people and we'll do it again. Who cares? Uh, I, sounds I, awesome. I love it. All right. Well, if you ever figure out how to do the group ones, let me know, because uh, I yeah. will have I've got a short list of folks that we would have a rip roaring good time if we all got on hey, here together. <laughs> that's, yeah. One of the things I like was thinking Josh of Josh Gad. Have you yeah. seen the Josh Gad? That's yes. what it needs to be, the gold slipper version. Yep. I would love that. I was just thinking the other day how much fun it would be 
to get Olympic captains that went against each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm in. Right? I'm in. Like, I'm and, still a little I, bitter you know, about my loss. Somebody, yo, your brother. I can't even. There's so See, many but words. It's also not say. right that they had the two of you guys against each other. Like Corey yeah. and I didn't have to go against each other, which I was right. like so grateful for. Like yeah. we weren't on the same team. Like that would have been broken. Like that would. That's just not right. You shouldn't do it that way. Your brother. <laughs> that's how I feel about that, Tom. When he was three. Okay. Yeah. And we were. I, and so this, he was bred for drafting, and you know. You give Tommy a lot no, of credit. <laughs> no, like no, you you don't you didn't live with him at, at camp to see the no, nature of his brain because he was the only person who could talk to Uncle Scott Davis and understand every single word that that man had to say, even when it was crazy, because <laughs> he talks crazy. And people, you know, you'll know what that means if you were around back then. He talks crazy. Mm -hmm. And then. But but when he went into drafting for that night, I thought I was like, I'm good. I got like, I write songs. I'm good. I got this. Like, I'm going to write my own songs. I don't even have to worry about that as a draft. Right. Back to back. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got draft songwriter. He took, oh, he took two amazing songwriters back to back who also did spirit. And that was cheating. And then. Boom. Right. Hi, I Boom. was the number one draft pick. That is another thing I'm proud of. I was the number one draft pick once, I think. I'm sticking oh, yeah. to it. I'm not, it's not confirmed, but I am pretty sure I was the number one draft pick. Now I'm like, oh, I used was to I? Get, yes. I used to get drafted for Spirit all the time. And then, like, I'd end up like writing one song, throwing it in, because I never liked teaching the songs. So I never got drafted for songs. I'd never like teaching them. So it was oh, like, oh, hard, but he's loud and crazy. Put him in. Like, he's fine. Like, he'll do all right. So I would do the, the cheering and stuff, but I was always forced by like day two. But oh my gosh, we had to go against each other. And to this day, he sat my children down because we did the Star Wars Bowl. And he was Darth Vader. I was Luke Skywalker. He sat my children down and tried to explain to them that the rebellion and Star Wars were actually the group that was breaking the law and that Darth Vader and the Emperor were actually the good guys because they were actually the people in charge that were dictating the trade organization of what was happening in the in the in the Empire, and that these rebel scum came and he he rewrote Star Wars for my kids, like it's like a whole different thing. And now mm -hmm. you know, when I talk about this, how sounds like my brother. No, oh, absolutely, it is. It's it's he's infiltrating and like warping no. these kids to they don't. No. Luke Luke was better. And I don't, that's, you know, and, and that's it. But this is a fight that is ongoing for 15 years. Like, See, this now is, this needs to be, let me know if you need me to moderate that one. Yeah, we might have to. I we might will be to. like, listen, guys, here's the rules of engagement. Yep. Yep. And we will, we will go. And so, I will have yeah. things like you, you, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. You shut your camera off. You're on timeout. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy but, is muted. Yep. Sam go. Yep, that's it. That's it. I want my five minutes to explain that you're wrong. Like, no, <laughs> no. But, but thank you so yeah, much for having thank me. Thank you Dan. for this being on awesome. here. I appreciate it. We'll do so, we'll do something else uh, something else to have you back on because we. Had a, I can't wait to watch all these other ones. Like, I definitely no. want to see Kelly and Darlene and who else, yeah. whoever else you've lined up. I'm all in. Yeah, I mean, and and it's been great. Like, we've had people from overseas. We've had, you know, we have Spoon did one. Like, so once all these start coming out, you'll, you know, everyone will start to, you know, kind of see it's a it's a very similar message you know from everybody yeah. because we all live the same similar kind of experience but i love hearing these stories i love going back in time with everybody for a minute and i'm looking forward to more of them and i'm looking forward to having you back on i had a blast thank you so much for sure being thing. here and we will thank you we'll so much again all right until Sounds next time. time see bye. you guys bye